to another amazing venture with your favorite podcast, Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. Boop, 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 boop. Welcome to Lucky Time Explosion, your source for art news, art chatter, and interviews with local artists. Although today, it's just me and Morgan because this is our election day special. Ah, it's election day. Everyone's nervous. No one could sleep. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to throw up. Nobody's happy. Yeah, it's gonna no. be a great day. Who yeah. are you voting for this year? Uh, it, I, I've been thinking about it. I did a lot of research, and mm. I've been watching a lot of news. That's good. Yeah, yeah. got to got to uh, stay informed. And uh, after looking at you know positive uh, and negative sides of both candidates. Mm. I really believe that uh, Freddy Krueger would be oh. the best president. <laughs> Freddy Freddy Krueger. Freddy like, Krueger. Like from the movies, like the, yeah. the, the horror film. The guy, he's burnt, and he wears a <laughs> shirt. He has a hat, and uh, he has a sweater that has black and red stripes. So he's kind of like a third-party candidate. Yes. Yeah, so you're going third-party. I'm going third-party. Okay. I just feel <laughs> like, you know, with uh, all the crazy wars happening around the world uh, today, that if Freddy Krueger became our president, I'm pretty sure no one is going to want to fuck with America because he could just, like, <laughs> enter their dreams and fuck them up. And there would be nothing that they could do. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, my come God. at us, bro. <laughs> Uh, so that that's your uh, that's the reason, huh? So you want him to use his dream powers to influence foreign policy? Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I like some of his ideas on the economy too. Yeah, what's, what's the, Freddie uh, saying uh, about the economy? Uh well, it's gonna it's gonna be a great it, economy for scissors. It's gonna be yeah. yeah we're blades. gonna bring back steel working back yeah. to the states. <laughs> uh, you know, this is important. These are things that are important to Freddie. Because uh, he gonna, bought his last glove on Wish, and it, it snapped, right? Right, yeah, so right, you're right. Get some Timu. good American-made uh, yeah. murder weapons. Yeah, yes. it, try try buying a weapon through Timu. See how that works. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, I'm going to vote for uh, Mu Dang, oh. the hippo from Thailand. I think it's probably the only candidate who could really unify this country right now. I agree. Everybody loves cuteness. Mudang. Usually wins. I mean, there's not too many people that hate cuteness. There, there are some. Yeah. I, I guess so. Those people scare me a little bit. Yeah, yeah like, I oh, like I cuteness. Hate. You know about cute aggression? No. A cute aggression is a thing where like something's so cute you want to like fucking squeeze it, and it's like a, it's called cute aggression. Like you're like, oh, it's so funny. Oh, yeah, it's like that old school Warner Brothers uh, cartoon guy is like, I will love him, I will pet him, I will make <laughs> him my best friend. And I will name like, him George. I will name him George. I love that dude. That's like the abominable snowman, right? Yeah, he's nice. Yeah, he's well, nice. well, until he crushes <laughs> your skull. <laughs> he, he doesn't know he's like lenny from a mice of men you know he's just like nice bunny oh oh uh -oh. whoa speaking of oh my god well it's the beginning oh of god. the end the, the riots have started that's it the riots have started uh we have not even gotten through election day polling yet and uh already things are coming down in the studio here anyway so yeah, we're we're here today by ourselves chatting, getting ready for election day. And uh, since this is supposed to be about art as well, I figured we could talk about political art. Mm. And there has been a lot recently, of course, yeah. you know, considering that today is election day. Um, That's true. I guess they dropped some stuff uh, across from the Capitol, uh, mm. Pelosi's desk with poop on it. Yes. Yeah. That In art news, we have two new sculptures in mm. the DC area. One is a giant desk with a big bronze poop on it that is meant to honor and uh, I think sarcastically yes. honor and uh, and commemorate uh, the time in January 6th when Pelosi's desk got pooped on. Uh, yes, and uh, I think that guy went to jail for about 12 months. Yeah, 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 for taking a poop on the desk. Well, yeah, I mean, I think pretty much anybody who poops on my desk should go to jail for 12 months. I'm down right. with that. I personally would like to take a poop on top of the poop, you know, as my own installation. Oh, wow. But that's... I just don't have the time to get down there. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank God. Yeah. And the other one is, is a hand holding a tiki torch. Oh, right, 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 right. So, you uh, know. Yeah. So uh, that, that one's interesting to me. I feel like, uh, I, I guess, like, if, first I want to ask you, do you think all art is political? Because, you know, that's a thing people like to say. They say, all art is inherently political. Do you uh, agree with that sentiment? I, I don't agree. I mean, unless it specifically, you know, mm. has elements of political references. Right. Or war. 
mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I guess the argument is that like everybody is political just by existing, but political art kind of like comes into two categories for me, which is like stuff that is um, uh, subtle, effective, and like, you know, within the zeitgeist of culture. And then there's like reactionary kind of like street art or shock value art. Right. And right. like, I'm not a big fan. Like, I don't know if you, do you have any favorites of a political art? Cause I got a couple. Like, I do. I do. What, what's your favorite? Political called art? the gourmet war by Jack Kevorkian. The guy, wait, the doctor who, uh, yes. the suicide doctor. Yeah. He paints fucking phenomenal painter. Wow. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. He was friends with Al Pacino. <laughs> I knew Al yeah, Pacino they, paints. Yeah. They, they hung out and, uh, yeah. No, and Al, it, and Al survived. Painting. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's political because it's a soldier, right? Right, right, right. And right. they're like, you know, it's a decapitated head. There's, you know, a war helmet full of bullets. And, uh, you know, I guess it means if you go to war, you're going to die. Most I mean, that's, likely, which is horrible. Oh, I just saw a video actually last night that I could probably play here. That's, uh, it was kind of fucked up. It was like a, uh, a dude from the Vietnam war shooting a machine gun that he shot in the war for the first time in like 53 years or something. This is old dude and he starts firing this gun and the look on his face is just like he's locked in he's got his eye open it just like he's just like for a minute he's back in nom and he's like and then when he stops he's like oh i'm back home he's ready to go he's no getting he was ready it was like it was a, such a weird combination because he's doing it for fun he's like shooting the gun for fun but like it, it's obvious that like the, he his response was like a combination of bliss and PTSD, like, or maybe just straight PTSD. He's like super confused. He's like, he literally was like, oh, I'm home is one of the things he said. I've never shot a gun before. Really? My whole life, never shot a gun. Oh, you're a bad range. American. I know. So you gotta do that. We I love guns. I had a slingshot. Yeah. It was pretty cool and you can definitely hurt people with it. That's true. And I've That's thrown true. a rock. Yeah. <laughs> You've thrown a rock. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> like a medium sized rock. So that doesn't count. That like, doesn't count. It may kill you. Yeah. I think my favorite political art piece is probably, um, ironically, even though I tease Banksy sometimes for like kind of being uh, a little on the nose or too obvious or like, ooh, capitalism bad kind of vibe. He, which is a joke I stole from Dan Rosen, by the way. Love Dan. Oh, man. Um, but uh my one of my favorite is actually a banksy piece and it was the one here at the bowery wall uh where it was a memorial not a memorial but a like you know in jail when you have to like describe how many days you've been in jail on the wall the little hashes it was that for an artist named uh zehra zehra dogan who was a turkish artist who was put in jail in turkey for making propaganda art that was almost exactly what she saw out of her window just like in a slightly darker like color tone like it was it was a bunch of like military trucks and hanging turkish mm. flags and like you know kind of like a messed up looking neighborhood and the picture of where she was painting it from was like it really looked almost exactly like that but like because she made it like look dark like it was a darker painting it wasn't like all bright and sunny and it wasn't showing them in a great light, although it wasn't really showing them in a bad light either. It was showing that maybe like, her lighting was low. Yeah, her light. Maybe, maybe her she lighting only was had selected colors of paint. To leave the person alone. So I will say that I'm glad you know we live in a country where uh, you won't go to jail for having dark lighting on your painting. Right, but he, but right. Banksy did this big thing where it was like all the check marks of her being in prison uh, for this, well, and then played a video uh, of that above it, uh, like the video of the actual artwork and a little documentary about her. Off the top of your yeah. head, um, do you know of any artworks that have put people in jail? Oh man, off the top of my head, not. I mean, definitely, there's a bunch. You know, it's definitely Never really true. thought about that, but you know, maybe, maybe and, more so like performance art. Well, remember that dude who like uh, squirted his blood all over the um, the Coons exhibit, right? But he, but then I Coons, mean, that is an I, installation. It isn't, of course. But he like no, it wasn't an official installation. He just Not went to the museum to do it. Right. It's, it's vandalism with biological fluids. Uh, kind of gross, but that guy went in there and did that, and then I think he probably got arrested, held shortly, not like put in jail forever or anything. Right. But he also got a call from Jeff Koons to say, hey, let me take you out to lunch. Thank you for all the press we got. Yeah, I would have done the same. Thank yeah. you for pissing all over my, my collage. It was beautiful <laughs> now. Yeah. Got this nice orange tint that right. I didn't have before. Yeah. <laughs> so... And when we talk about like a least favorite political art, do you have that? Do you have a pick for your least favorite? 
Hmm, I'd have to think about that one. Maybe Starry Night? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was a, a secret cry against the asylum system. Right, yeah, right. No, I think my, and this is a, a tough thing for me to say because I, I think a lot of my least favorite political art is Trump-based. Not because I'm some great supporter of Donald Trump, but because uh, I think a lot of times it like just misses the mark and actually gives the other side way more ammo. Like I think about that Kathy Griffin piece, right? Like that's one of them. Like, what was that about? You know that she obviously got, like got canceled for that. She like, just uh, wants attention. She lost a ton of uh, of uh, contracts. NBC like fired her or whatever. Um, but yeah, like the picture was just like it was so serious. Like it wasn't like a comedian doing a bit. Like on it, weirdly, if she was like smiling and laughing while holding up a bloody head, right? I would kind of be like, oh, that's intense. But uh, you know, Jesus. But right, this was right. just like a, she's like staring at it, like. Uh, it kind of gave you the sense that she's a little deranged you know yeah. and then the tiki torch piece too that just went up in dc like i find that problematic just because um uh, th if the artist doesn't know this i mean i'm sure they do but like that point about the very fine people thing is like being used by pro-trump people to as an example of how they you know can twist his words or whatever and like you know that's not hard to do it's donald trump uh, and I don't know if there were very fine people there who weren't neo-Nazi white supremacists, you know, torch wheeling crazies. Uh, but that he was like first like, oh, I, you know, we have to condemn them, of course. And then he said that thing and the media ran with it really hard. Like he was talking specifically about the Tiki torch wielders, which this piece is kind of reinforcing that idea. And whether there's like truth to that idea or not. It's like this is one of those things that just digs people in further. You see a lot of really gross work against Trump that's like talking about how he's fat, talking about how he's orange, kind of like doing all these base attacks that are the things that the same people are saying usually you shouldn't do. Like they're body positive. They don't want to, you know, if you talk about somebody being fat, they're like, hey, that's fat shaming. Right. But then they turn around and make this piece. It's like, look how fat and disgusting well, he is. It's not fair that anybody should be making fun of him being orange. He was born that way. It's a, <laughs> it's a skin condition, just like Michael Jackson had his skin condition. And no one seemed to believe him. But, you know, it happens over time. It's called orange angia. Uh, <laughs> and it's you know he has been inflicted it's a very rare case and there's yeah. a lot of people who are upset because they have family members who uh happen to be orange as well right and i think what happens unfortunately in, in your later age when you have this you start to grow mold right and it's it's just downhill from there <laughs> right it's it's, it's Sick. It's sad. Wiki it. Wiki it. Yeah, that that spraying devices is, is meant to treat it. That's like his antibiotic treatment. Right. right? It's like fertilizer. That is funny, man. But yeah. What's the? What do you think the general vibe here in New York leading up to the election? Just, just uh, very tense. Nothing crazy tense. yet. Yeah. I'm shocked because we're humans and we usually like to destroy things and right. and fuck shit up and scream and throw. That'll, that'll wait till after peel. the election, probably. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll um, see. I'm ready. I just I've been buying a lot of canned food and uh, you <laughs> know, where do oats, we get it's, oats? It's sad. That, it's sad that we got to this level where it's like you know how do you prepare for the election uh, by hoarding rations and uh, MREs? And Actually, like, uh, getting your uh, sh your slingshot ready. I won't get into it, but it just so happened that they fell into my lap like two ounces of shrooms. So I guess <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess I, we'll find out. I tried a little bit yesterday. You were acting a little weird today. I guess that's why. Huh? Um, well, I couldn't really sleep. I don't know if it's because of my just my normal life. It's pretty interesting. I'm not like super freaked out or stressed mm -hmm. uh, right now. No, you're I feel just like, like a eh. lot of people are really freaked out. They and, are. Uh, I think everybody takes this shit way too seriously. Like, I want everybody well, to I think chill out. Just fuck, no matter what. So, with I that being so. said, I th I think you know. Yeah, I just think everybody Whatever. like is really, really uh, attached to presidential politics, and it's weird because it's like kind of the opposite of what you should be doing if you want to really affect change. Like, you should be voting local. I think a lot of people just skip over the whole local section of their ballot. Right? They're like, right. I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm here to vote for the president like the figurehead. Well, that's why I, I don't care about all these other things. And it's like, right. and then those things actually go into effect and affect your like tax rates and your, you know, zoning but, laws and all this shit. You don't really need anybody else. If Freddy Krueger is in charge, that's like, true. You don't need anything else. Like he's yeah. got the backs of every American <laughs> 
And uh, against you know, I the went, wall while he's slashing. Them. Yeah, I went canvassing with him. You want somebody to slash taxes? It's going to be he's Freddie's your be man. He's slashing the shit out of taxes. You know, I think you should make a political piece of art about Freddy Krueger. You should have Freddy Krueger uh, stood up in like a suit, you know, and running at the podium. Why not? Yeah, no, I mean he has a lot of charisma. Yeah, and uh, you know, I remember in the second one, he's like, "You got the body, I got the brain." You know? <laughs> That was an interesting uh, movie, but yeah, Freddie all the way. Um, yeah, I did canvassing with him. Yeah, um, we, have you ever we, actually canvassed before, like on the street? Have you ever done that? Well, we didn't do it in the street. He took me into other people's in dreams. dreams. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I had it, a canvas once for Greenpeace. I did that. I signed really? up for Greenpeace because it was paid training. It was like twelve bucks an hour. You go what and year get is paid. This? Oh God, like two thousand, like three, like early two thousands. Nice. Um and. <laughs> It was a nightmare, dude. That was like, a, it was an interesting look into Greenpeace too. Cause like, were you one of those people who are like, oh, excuse me, yeah, you have one moment? Me. Well, they take you oh, through the training sucks. for canvassing. And I'm sure this is the same for political. I'm sure all canvassing is the same. It's like an art form itself, right? But th the training was literally like we got in outside and we've gone in two lines and, and we role played like people walking down the street. <laughs> And the instructor was like, you know, try to make your, like an animal, like try to make yourself as big what? as possible to block their path. You know, like you have to puff out, like hold your arms out and oh like try to visually so block obnoxious. their path in order for them to try and stop and talk to you. And yeah, and like the whole office was just dedicated, seemed like to running this, these canvassing uh, campaigns, which is why I eventually got disillusioned with it. I was like, they're making all this money and they're paying these people pretty well. And it's they just probably like, didn't hire smaller people. No, <laughs> no it, there, you can. It was you everybody. Can't really take on they were as much ground, inclusive. so they're probably looking for people who are a little bit bigger with a huge wingspan. Because <laughs> if your wingspan is huge, they're going to have a lot more trouble getting around your body if you right. hold your arms out. Yeah, you know? no, I did it for like a couple of days, and then I left, and they were like not happy that I left because I had one person sign up on my first day, which was. Um, uh not my fault like i didn't do it like i didn't convince anybody i didn't do a good job he ran across the street and was like i've been meaning to do this for a while and i'm like cool i guess and then i was like <laughs> yeah and then i signed up and I, I quit i was like i'm sorry i'm gonna you know i didn't uh i, I don't want to do this like it's not for me wow. i'm a person per i'm a person person i like talking to people but like i've got these talking points you know you're not really allowed to go off of them like uh to, to try and like give your own take or anything uh, and you, most people doing that don't know anything about what's in the book that they're talking about, that they're trying right. to convince you of. They're like, give you talking points about global warming, talking points about whatever. Uh, and I said, no. And they said, oh, oh please, please. And I said, no. Uh, and then I came back like a year later to like turn in my vest and get my check. And they, nice. I would never they still turn had in. my records. Though, I so. would never turn in my vest from anywhere that I worked at. Yeah. I, when I got fired at Blockbuster. You still have that shit? I still have the shirt. And when I, the guy was letting me go, this guy named Frank. Mm hmm long story and um he asked me to give him my t-shirt and i was like frank this is the only shirt i have man you sick fuck i am not <laughs> giving i am walking out of this blockbuster i worked here for oh two years and i ain't leaving without my embroidered blue and gold collared blockbuster t-shirt nice um but you know i i worked for the government before oh yeah what what government job did you have i was a census taker. Oh, yes. That's right. I updated maps and asked people really uncomfortable questions. Did you see anything weird while you were looking uh, for the census? Well, there was one time where I was about to knock on the door and I heard like a mom beating the shit out of their kid. <laughs> oh, no. Like, shoot, shit. And the kid's like, ah. And I'm like, I, I, like, yeah. I was ready to knock nick, on nick. the door. And I was like, yeah, I'm skipping this one. I'm going to call, come back later. Yeah, no, fuck that. Came back later and. No, I didn't even come on the other Yeah, side. I came back later, and it was ambulances, cops. No, and no, I'm just joking. It's horrible, but it was scary, and I left. But that, it was an interesting job. That was your government job, dude. I got paid. I think it was like eighteen an hour, and I got paid for every mile. Mm, like a I bonus. Just drove in circles. Yeah, and lied. Well, my wife had to work for the government for a while, and she had security cameras put in the home. I had to put them in your own home to watch you while you're what working for like security stuff. Yeah. I don't like that. I wouldn't want that. Yeah. I, and then we just left them up and now I just use them. She but uses it. would be like, this kid keeps on masturbating. He won't stop. <laughs> yeah. She uses it to harass me from the bedroom. I'll be like on the living room couch and the, the camera will turn on like ours here and be like, meh, meh, meh. yeah, that would freak me. me out. It's like, this it's is funny. God. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't I'm like watching it. you. Yeah. 
Oh man. Well, it's other things too. Other things are going on as well. Not just the election. Not, really? Not you just sure politics. About that? Yeah. <laughs> I well, I was surprised because we looked up our day. It, it's time for our next segment. What day is it? <laughs> uh, so sometimes we like to look at national holidays because there's too goddamn many of them. And you would think on a sacrosanct day like this that we would have only election day, but there are other holidays happening. There's We've few, got there's a few today. My favorite, National Chinese Takeout Day. Oh, man. You'd think that would be Christmas. True. But <laughs> for the Jews. <laughs> for the Jews. That's what they always said. Go out for a movie and Chinese food. I, I do that now. I feel like that is actually transformed into less of like a Jewish thing because Christmas uh, and everything else is closed and more into like a weird New York tradition for like non-Jewish New Yorkers to do it. I right. think they also go out on for Christmas. Do you still give and get things. presents? Yeah, I, I try, you know, sometimes uh, as much as I can, even if it's something small, you know, just a little card or something. You know? Yeah, I, I found helpful. a bunch of uh, batteries I haven't used and I'm going to send them to my mom. <laughs> Why? There's Why? Like, there's, I have more drawers I haven't checked yet, so I may have like D batteries. I may have, even have the lithium for watches. You're just giving her things to put in a sack and beat you with. Oh yeah, I got a few pens. Yeah yeah no i mean to beat you yeah. like a redheaded stepchild oh and that brings us to national redhead day holy shit there's actually two redhead days today there's national redhead day and then there's national appreciate your red hair day that's just to make them feel better you got to ease into it you got to first appreciate your red hair then you can celebrate it but it's all in one so you got to get it done within the next 24 hours if you're a ginger listening to this well i'm gonna start my, feeling good my uh uh hollywood crush mm. is he lohan there oh yeah go. There you bang, go. Bang. She aged well. Oh, delicious. Sorry if I sound like a bad. Sound wow. like a creep, bro. You're a creeper. Wow. I'm sorry. She's a beautiful lady. Speaking of creepers, it's also Ike Turner's birthday. <laughs> Slap. <Ow! laughs> What's what, love got to do with it? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, it's, it's a nothing. very interesting time. You're seeing a lot of uh, split stuff. Mm. Uh, you know, what? Quincy Jones passed away. Quincy Jones passed away? Oh, yeah, R.I.P. R.I.P. That's a big one. Yeah. I mean, Thriller. That album right there is one of the, ooh. I mean, growing up, you know, and having MTV early on, Michael Jackson was the man. Yeah. He had the best videos. But uh, yeah, rest in peace, Quincy. Who's Great the Michael time. Jackson of today? Probably they would say Morgan Lappin. No. Uh, <laughs> the closest they actually say, from what I understand, is that Chris Brown is one of the people that can dance almost as good as Michael Jackson. I, mm. I usually, I'm like, Usher's good, too. They're like, no, you have to see Chris Brown. I'm like, oh. Speaking of Chris Brown. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> Ow! No. What's going on in your life? Uh, we have a few more minutes before we wrap up. What's what's happening with you, like with your practice? You making, uh, you're still working on that giant ass piece? I am, and mm -hmm. hopefully it comes to a close before the end of the year, if nice. there is an end of a year after this election. No. <laughs> and I've also taken on painting. I've been working uh, what? with painting, acrylics. You heard it here first, folks. Morgan's now a painter. Crossed over to the other side. How do you like painting versus collage? Um, it if you had to vote for one, if you had to vote for painting or collage, who would you vote for? Collage. Yeah, I know. You, you better say that. Otherwise, your constituency is going to like take yeah, you I know. behind the barn. That's right. Yeah. All the way behind the barn, under the barn. Yeah. Oh, God. You live there now. Scary under that barn. <laughs> um, do you remember that randomly redneck rampage? Remember redneck that video rampage? Game? No, it was like I a don't. When, when first person shoot -ems, like got like super hot. There was a game called Redneck Rampage where you wow. just like in the, in the, you know, the thick of it, <laughs> in the south, in the cornfields, like shooting like hick zombies and like. No, I don't, I don't remember cows. that at all. I remember Postal. Postal was great. That's a yeah. sick game. Yeah. Well, the first Postal. Do you remember yeah. the first one? That's what I'm like talking above, about. Yeah, the, the yeah. old top scroller. And uh, the company that made it was called Running With Scissors. Right. And Are they still around? I don't, I don't think so. There's a, a great wiki on uh, <laughs> the, the postal game, but you know <clears throat> it was a very controversial game because it's like senseless, brutal murdering. You're, mm. I mean, it's exactly what it. It sounds like you're a guy who worked at the postal office who loses his mind, and each stage you're just in another town killing civilians. And then, it was pretty dark, right? It ended up with like a. Well, this it ended is how you win. School. Yeah, it ended yeah. at an elementary school. You're Ooh. supposed to. Just like destroy everything and bomb, and then by by winning the game, you wind up in a mental institution, and you you're there for the rest. And that's winning. I the game. I think there were like several weird endings too. Like I remember watching something about multiple endings of that game. 
But I remember going, that was like around the time of GTA 1 was out, you know, the first one, the top scroller. And uh, I remember going to buy GTA at the GameStop in the mall or whatever it was called. I think it was called like Coastal Games or something at the time. And the guy didn't want to sell it to me. He was really, really intense. He was like, I'm not selling you this. And then I was like, well, I'm with my parents. Can I like, can they buy it for me? And he was like, bring them in. And like they brought them in and he effectively talked them out of letting me have it. So he was like, you can't buy, you shouldn't buy this That's for your child. Bullshit. It's violent. It's crazy. Um, you know, you run over people for fun. Like <laughs> it's a terrible game. And my parents were like, okay, Brandon, you know, get something else. And I'm like, uh, I'm not going to get anything. So I went home and pirated it immediately and just played it that night still. Of course. I mean, it was sorry, tough. Rockstar. <clears throat> Even sorry, when Rockstar. Um, Wolfenstein came out, they, they were really careful on who they were selling that to. And um, oh, yeah. I even had a little trouble getting that. But at the time I had a... Which is wild to think about now, considering yeah. what has come after Wolfenstein and the, the legacy of Wolfenstein and how many more games they've made after that. And, so hilarious i mean it is i mean like the leader of the game is hitler wizard just <laughs> shooting he like wizard. disappears and reappears and shoots fireballs and when mm. you kill him he goes Ava, oh, <laughs> oh man and then you do the whole running towards the light at the end of the tunnel and then you jump up mm. and then it captures that last frame of you victorious which actually is for me taken from a movie actually mm. uh the end of midnight express I don't know if you've um, ever seen that movie. Yeah. Phenomenal movie. And at the end, the guy, long movie, he breaks out of a Turkish jail. But at the end, he gets out. And last shot is he jumps up in victory. For, uh, uh, and they just took that. Out. But I think they, they took it from that. But yeah, Wolfenstein. That's pretty interesting. I had a BBS back then. For those who don't know what that is, that is a bulletin board system. You're old. Direct connect. I needed my own phone line. Yep. And uh, there was like this porn game called like Madam Chang's Palace. Oh, God. Uh, and like it's pixel i mean you you're just a bunch of blocks like, like running custer's around revenge was a fucked up one too i don't know if i remember that one and that they wouldn't sell it to me they're like you're not no. 18 i'm like dude it's really? like a porn game yeah like you don't know what i do at home bro <laughs> you don't know well Give that issue's game. gotten a lot crazier now <laughs> now you've got your average age of uh, being addicted to porn is 11 i think now well the thing is you know like well video games too like back then in regards to like porno games like again you're just like a bunch of pixelated blocks now the yeah. game has changed yeah everything's know? changed a lot I, I vr stuff's crazy yeah you know Even i'm in the GTA, big vr world like, horrible things to ladies right i don't play that game i don't play D gta i'm very against you're a good it. boy yeah you're a good boy i played uh toe jam and earl i don't oh, know. i love toe jam and earl that's oh, some great man. art right there they were supposed to make that into a movie i don't know yeah. what happened i got to do my research but I got to look into that. That's cool. I was excited, but you know. Yeah, I fired up my headset for the first time uh, in a long time. It's been like a little over a month since I posted anything to TikTok. And I went and did one like on Sunday, I think, because uh, I fired open the painting program just to mess with it. And they You're had this back to it. new holiday, this new like Halloween brush. And how could they so I usually do yeah. this? And how could they find you on social media? <laughs> At Wise Carver on TikTok. But follow yeah. Lucky Time Explosion on Patreon for extra goodies. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, no, so I, fir I fired up that uh, the old game and uh, I noticed that from in September 12th, Meta had DM'd me. Oh man! Uh, and I was like, I was like, oh shit! September twelfth. Uh, so I don't know if you're listening, Meta. I love you. Yeah, get on me, Zuckerberg. Put me in your stable. Come on, come come on our show and talk about your Zuckerness and <laughs> UFC fighting. Yeah. Whatever happened? To you, I'll tell you. If, well, if, I think if that Trump UF wins. Yeah. Then they definitely gotta have that MMA fight. Zuckerberg I'm pretty, has to fight. Musk. I am. I'm pretty sure that in the future, uh, MMA cage match is how we will be deciding uh, the future president. So fucking awesome! I'm done on with this that. election day. Y'all got to get out there and go vote. Make your voices heard. If yeah. you're seeing this, you probably already did vote. Hopefully. Uh, but anyway, thanks for joining us on this election day special. Yay! Go check out those statues in Washington while they're still there. And, and take a poop on them. Take a poop on them. Or don't. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys for joining us again. We love you. We have more episodes running out weekly. So check us out on Patreon and shout out to our sponsor, Solace Studio, who are here is where we record. We record here at Solace. So check out Solace Studio. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.